Born in Los Angeles County, Collins lived near a truck boulevard on the wrong side of the tracks. When Collins was 11, his father built a house for the family, paying his young son 50 cents a day to help with the construction. Jim worked every day, and by the end of the summer, he had saved $40. He used his savings to buy a horse, paying for the feed out of the money from the paper route. He joined the 4-H club, bought a cow, and sold milk to the neighbors for 25 cents a half gallon. He raised rabbits and chickens. He sold turkeys at Thanksgiving and had at least 10 jobs going for neighbors along with his paper route. When the war ended, he enrolled at UCLA to study engineering. To meet expenses, he washed dishes every day at lunchtime and again at dinner. Midway through the construction of a coffee shop, a chance acquaintance took Collins to see a new 15-cent hamburger stand. I was so impressed, I went home, tore up my plans for the coffee shop, and drew some plans for a hamburger stand. Collins borrowed $10,000 from his father-in-law and opened up his first hamburger handout in September of 1952. For the next five years, he worked 16 hours a day, seven days a week, frying hamburgers and making shakes alongside his employees. <laughs> the Horatio Alger Award is a story about rags to riches. I thought that tonight I might start out by telling you that as a young lad, just how far I had to walk through the snow, no shoes, in the wintertime to get to school each day. But as I thought about that, I said, wait, I better not do that because there won't be a dry eye in the house. <clears throat> and besides, my wife said they'll never believe you when they find out, and you already have, that I was born in Southern California. <laughs> then I thought, well, maybe I could find something in the attic and show you some of my old rags. But then I decided that as long as my wife, Carol, had a black belt in shopping, that I might as, it would be more fun for you to take a, take a look at her new rags tonight, over there. About the time that uh, Love Smith contacted me about the Horatio Alger Award late last year, I, my secretary had a call for me and she hollered in, do you know a Dick McDonald? And I quickly thought back about 35 years ago, back in 1952, and remembered that brief meeting in San Bernardino when I met those two brothers, Dick and Mac McDonald, who founded a small company which is now part of the Dow Jones Industrial Averages. I picked up the phone, and the voice on the other, said, on the other end said, Jim, I just want to say thank you for the nice things that you said about my brother and me in Jim Love's new book, McDonald's. That meeting back in 1952 was a turning point in my life. After a stint in the Navy for a couple of years, and as Pat said, I ended up on the GI Bill at UCLA, and yes, for $75 a month from the government and washing dishes a couple of times a day, I managed to get a degree in civil engineering in January 1950. I spent the next two years working for a construction company building churches. Is it any wonder that success would soon follow? Somebody up there really likes me. At least that big guy up in the sky led me to Dick and Mac McDonald and their first hamburger stand in San Bernardino. They weren't franchising at that time, so I was able to copy their format. They didn't mind. In fact, they even really helped me along. And I found a site in Culver City, and with 10,000 of my own money, and as Pat mentioned, 10,000 borrowed, I was in business, and believe it or not, no competition. It was an immediate success, and I was a very, very happy 25-year-old. From hamburgers, yes, hamburgers, 35 years, I've come all this way to ham, and by that, I mean the Horatio Alger member. But it wasn't to be the career in hamburgers. In 1960, I was lucky enough to make a trip to Northern California to visit a good friend of mine, Mrs. Burke, and she was operating four hamburger drive-ins in San Francisco area. She had a new product. Guess what it was called? Kentucky Fried Chicken. I'd never heard of it. 
She said, Jim, what are you doing tomorrow? And I said, well, I'm going to be frying hamburgers. And she said, no, you're not. You're going to go to Shelbyville, Kentucky with me and visit the colonel. So on February 6th, 1960, this little old lady, 65 years old, kidnapped a 33-year-old hamburger fry cook, and off we went to Shelbyville, Kentucky. After three days of hospitality at the colonel's home, I returned to Los Angeles and put Kentucky Fried Chicken into my four hamburger handouts. Today, we are the largest franchisee of Kentucky Fried Chicken Corporation with over 250 units in the United States and Australia. Back in 1958, my ice cream salesman, Del Johnson, asked me to help him start a Sizzler Steakhouse. I didn't even know what it was, but I did help him. Nine years later, he walked in the door in 1967, and he said, Jim, I'd like you to buy me out so I can spend the rest of my life playing golf. And he really meant it. <laughs> he made two of my associates and I an offer to buy out the Sizzler chain, and he did it for less than a million dollars on a 6% 10-year note. And believe me, that's what friendships are all about. <laughs> Today, Sizzler has a market value on Wall Street as a public company of almost $400 million. I wanted to mention a 29-year-old accountant from Arthur Anderson who helped us when we did our purchase investigation to buy that Sizzler chain in 1967. His name is Dick Birmingham. What a guy. On May 1st, just 15 days ago, after 19 years, I turned over the CEO reins to Dick, and he's now in charge of the company, and I'm going to remain as chairman, which will keep me plenty busy, and besides, my wife likes the idea that I'm still going to be on the payroll. Remember, I told you she's a great shopper. <laughs> on a more serious note, the private enterprise system has just been very, very good to me. And hence, I would like to continue to do what I can to repay the system for my good fortune in life. Membership in the Horatio Alger Association will afford me an additional avenue to do just that, and I'm thankful to have that opportunity. Yes, my journey along in life's way has been challenging, exciting, fun, and all the rest. And each person here tonight and all of you out there have your own definition of success and I would tell you that if I've achieved some measure of it during my last three and a half decades, I would like to attribute it to the following. Lots of hustle, hard work, and being enthusiastic. Being in the right place at the right time. Friends returning favors. Lots of love and support from my family. Being very lucky, plus a lot of help from the good Lord. Thank you very much.